If I could just share with you an incredible story that teaches us what it means to have a good heart. And then, you know, once we could, Bezad Hashem, emulate uh, the lesson of the story, we are going to as well achieve a good heart and love everybody <coughs> the way this rabbi did. And maybe we can take a lesson on Achavat Hinam, on baseless love, from someone who genuinely loves every single individual. And that person is no other than Rav David Trank. I don't know if you ever heard of the rabbi. But he had a such an Ahawas Yisrael, he loved every single human being on the planet, didn't matter who they were. And they say a story about Rav David Trank. He dealt with students who were on the you know, periphery. If you, you know, if you didn't encourage them or you didn't validate them right away, they would go off the derech. Very difficult students. And you had to give them a chizuk and encourage them and be very patient with them. And one time, the rabbi made a Shabbaton. And he invited all the boys to his, to his house. One of the boys was not interested in the Shabbaton. He just came to uh, chill with his friends. And then he had this idea. He said, you know, maybe I should go to the movies. And he asked one of his friends, you want to come with me? We're going to go to the movies. And uh, I'm sure there's so many boys here, the rabbi is not going to even notice that we're gone. He says, how are we going to get there? He says, we're going to take the rabbi's car. So he says, take the rabbi's car. Not only are you going to be mechalol Shabbat, you're going to go to the movies, but you're going to even steal the rabbi's car. He says, listen, are you in or are you not in? I'm going to go on the rabbi's car. The rabbi is not going to know what he's going to check his car on Shabbat. It's in the parking lot. He's not going to notice anything. Don't worry. So the guy says, listen, if you do whatever you want, but I'm not doing it. I'm not going with you. So the guy goes and he takes the rabbi's keys without the rabbi noticing. And the Shabbat begins. He gets into the car. He drives off to the movie theater. And the rabbi notices. He noticed because he loved every single, every single boy. He gave them his attention. He noticed that one boy was missing. He approached his friend. He says, you know where your friend is? I notice he's missing. He says, Rabbi, I'm embarrassed to tell you this, but my friend decided to steal your car. He went to a movie theater right now on Shabbat. He's watching a movie. He says, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. What should we do? He says, he says, uh, he says you know what? I have an idea. He says, you guys, he kept the boys busy. He said, I'm going to go. I'll be right back. He walked. The movie theater from the rabbi's house was about an hour and a half. He found out where the movie theater was located. He walked an hour and a half till he got to the movie. He walked to the movie theater. And he walks to the stand, uh, and he comes up to the lady behind the stand. He says, excuse me, I'm not interested in watching a movie. Like, imagine a Shabbat, the rabbi with a big beard approaches a movie theater, and looks like he wants to watch a movie. Is everything okay? And the lady says, yes, how can I help you? He says, listen, I'm not interested in watching a movie. I just came to speak to a student. I'll be right out. Please just give me a few minutes. She says, okay, no problem. So he goes in. It's dark. He gets inside. He goes inside the movie theater, and he's looking for the boy. As he's looking, he finds him in one of the rows. He approaches him without the boy noticing. He sits down right next to him. And then he puts his hand right on top of his hand and he looks at the boy and the boy got so scared he turns and sees his Rebbe in front of him. He couldn't believe it. Rebbe, what are you doing over here? And all of a sudden they hit him. The Rebbe walked an hour and a half. He thought the rabbi is going to give it to him over the head. He thought the rabbi is going to ridicule him. He's going to lambast him. He's going to embarrass him in front of the entire movie theater. How could you? You stole my car. You went to the movies on Shabbat. You were on Shabbat. How could you? But that's not what the rabbi did. He just whispered in his ear. I just came all the way here just to let you know that the popcorn is not kosher. Please, don't eat the popcorn. The boy was so moved by what the Rebbe did. He didn't know how to react. He was frozen. And as the Rebbe was about to get up and leave, suddenly the, the boy grabs onto the Rebbe's head and says, Please, Rabbi, take me out of here. Please, Rabbi, just take me out of here. I don't want to be here. He takes the, rab the Rabbi's head and they walked out of there together. And they walked home for an hour and a half back, back to the Shabbaton. And the entire time, they did not one time speak about how the boy stole the car. Nor did they one time speak about the boy was Mechalal Shabbat, or nor did they speak about how he went to the movies. Not one time. And the boy was so taken aback by what happened, and what he just experienced. How the rabbi accepted him, accepted him no matter what. How the rabbi only saw the good in him. And he just came because he cared about his neshama. And because he loved him so much, he felt that love. He turned to the rabbi when they got to the doorstep of that door, as they were walking back into that house, where all the boys were waiting for them. The boy turns to the rabbi and he says, Rabbi, I just wanted to let you know. I will never be Mechalel Shabbat again. And as a man of his word, he was never Mechalel Shabbat again. You could clap, you could clap. I don't hear anybody, but you guys, I'm sure you're clapping for the story because this, clap, this story deserves clapping. Can you imagine? Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. So can you imagine such a thing? Somebody will love somebody else. And that's how we save them. Not through embarrassing them, not by ridiculing them, not by, God forbid, putting them down. But just showing, I really care about you. I'm just letting you know, the popcorn in this movie theater is not kosher. And therefore, the boy ended up growing up to be a big tzaddik. He actually grew up to love Jews because that love that that Rebbe had, he infused into that boy. And he learned from that Rebbe. And he ended up being such a bal chesed. He started helping other Jews. 
he doesn't want na- uh, no, people to know his name for various reasons. For well, number one, he's embarrassed about the story, and number two, he tries to stay anonymous. But he's such a tzaddik, and he helps so many people in so many ways he can. And so too, we can also find the good in every single individual. Somehow focus on that good, and you can impact people in ways that you cannot imagine. Whether you'll be your friend, whether you be your sibling, whether you be your spouse, or whether you be your child. If you come from a genuine place, a place of sincerity, if you really care about that person, that person will feel it. And they know that you really mean it. And they will, as a result, reciprocate. And therefore, love every single person. And even if you see something, they did something terrible. Be patient, be deliberate, and you never know what the outcome could be. And from here we can see he could have destroyed the kid, and the kid would have been embarrassed, but he could have stayed down. But what brought him up was the Rebbe, because the Rebbe made sure to focus on the good, and he just cared about his neshama, and he just told him, please make sure don't eat the popcorn.